Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you as always for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Um, this video, my, I might get my words mixed up. It's about half past four in the morning. I had bad news from the doctors. That's why I haven't made uh, videos for, I don't know, perhaps I'm put out for a week. I don't know what day it is. I know it's about half past four and I know that it's 2021. That's close enough for me, okay? So, um, for people who have watched me on this series, Road to Recovery, you'll remember that the last video was about stress and causes of stress. And I had quite a few emails and comments and there was a recurring mes message that came through, or recurring themes, that's what I should say. And um, there's so many themes that I've decided that each theme, I'll just have to make a video for each one because they're just, uh, there's a lot to say about each one. So for the first one I've chosen, well, it was top of the list, money. That is the main cause of stress for people. And if you haven't been following this series and you've just seen the heading Coping with Stress and Money, then welcome. Thank you very much for tuning in. And the reason that I'm making this uh, series Road to Recovery is because I suffer from something called a hemiplegic migraine, which is in basically incurable and there's a lot of people um, who suffer throughout the world. And I didn't realise, I thought, oh, there's only one in so many. And locally, I've met two. And the last one that I met was a nurse that took my bloods. Yeah, my bloods. Let's not go there. More treatment, yeah. Anyway, let's not be depressed. I'm still alive, no matter what I've got to go through over the next three months, a uh, few months. I'm still spreading the love and happiness. So that's the reason why I've named the, if you haven't been following Road to Recovery, that's the reason why uh, it's called Coping with Stress and Money. It's just one of the, they're called triggers. And triggers set off hemiplegic migraines and migraines. And stress has a, an amazing um, way of coming out in people. Eczema, um, psoriasis. Uh, I'll cover it at the end of these triggers, how, how badly it affects your body. And you'll be pretty shocked. Um, it's not just mentally and... That physically and yeah, just all sorts does terrible things to you. So we will crack on with the video, and this is about my third attempt at making this video. And each time the video comes out an hour long, it's going to be a long video. If you reach a point and you think, oh, God, can't take any more, just press pause. Go and have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, cigarette, whatever, come back to it. And what I want would, well, what I would like you to take away from this video is that if money is stressing you out, there's debt, that's the obvious uh, thing. Maybe not being able to make ends meet, you just can't earn enough money because we're living in survival times. Um, I'll be thrown out uh, some some of my opinions and just ideas and uh, especially one organisation in Britain that can help if you are severely in debt. And when we talk about money, it's very, very difficult. It's such a huge subject. Um, yes, we need money to live. But unfortunately, we live in a very fast, materialistic world. And if you think about what you 
what you watch on TV, the adverts and some programs. There's all this glitz and glamour and all the um, really expensive cars and wonderful houses. And it's all just shoved in your face as if that is what life should be. Life is basically being happy and healthy. Simple as that. I might be simplistic in my view, but yeah, that's... I, yeah, as long as I'm healthy and happy. I'm not healthy, but I'm happy. Um, but people put... Because it's a materialistic world, they put a lot of store uh, by their possessions. It's as if they're creating a... How can I phrase it? A sort of persona, a sort of life that they've they've got in their head or they've always had in their head that... that that is how life, their life, should be. And um, they just can't afford it. So they keep buying this, buying that. And um, before you know it, <sighs> credit cards, store cards, uh, bank overdraft. Yeah, it, it, sounding familiar. And... We could look at it from a psychological point of view, that if you th step back and think, why are you spending money on all these, I'll call them frivolous uh, items? Uh, you don't need them, you just want them. And remember those two words, want and need. I'll be um, going over those now soon. And a couple of psychological factors that could be in place is that maybe uh, a person grew up with not their parents didn't earn a lot of money and now that they they've reached adulthood they have able to get credit cards overdraft what have you and they have always wanted certain things wanted and then they go out and they just buy them and then of course the debt racks up and everything but psychologically, because they went without, now they think that they're free to buy what they want, even though they're spending beyond their means. The other end of the spectrum could be that um, children have had everything that they want. They just ask for whatever they want and their parents buy it. And then they reach adulthood and they look at their paycheck and they realise that they're not earning enough money to have what they want. Want. And the, when it comes into that category, they can either, and probably the former as well, they can either think to themselves, well, I earn this amount of money and that's all I've got to live off and I'm going to live within that. Or they decide to go down the route of credit cards, bank overdraft and store cards. And if you're watching this in America, uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, they're the countries that watch me the most. Um, in Britain, you can get store cards. I don't know whether it's the same in your countries. And they push these cards onto you and the APR is 29.9% on whatever you buy and they push it on you so instead of a debit card you just go in and put it on a store card and they give you a limit exactly the same as a debit card and you pay you should pay it off each month but then you get more and more store cards the same as you get more and more credit cards so there's an endless sort of amount that people can get whether it's credit cards store cards and 29.9% APR is a lot. That is a tremendous amount of interest to be repaid. But also, a people with depression, a sign of depression is buying things. And um, we'll co cover depression in another uh, video. But um, it's a form, they, they go out and then they buy something and it's an instant gratis gratification that they get. Um, it makes them feel good. Uh, 
it's sort of yeah they they've bought it they take it home they they feel good they don't feel depressed and then a couple of days later their mood goes down and then they go and buy something else and then again it's instant gratification and so the cycle goes on and it's a bit like a sugar rush where they get uh some people get uh like oh i needed that sugar oh i really needed it i love that or you know um sweets candy in america and uh that that's the feeling that they get when they're depressed so psychologically there are a lot of ways and if you just step back and think why are you spending so much money on i as i call them frivolous things just step back and have a think you know why what is the root what is the cause what has made you like that to go out and spend all this money and i there's lots of for instances that i could give you um um you know scenarios where people um okay we'll take this scenario Ch uh husband and wife got a child maybe a couple of children and i have seen it many a time and they buy that see the eldest child is about five or six and they buy the child a proper computer now what i mean by proper computer is a computer with a tower remember five or six years old buy him a laptop we can't forget the old tablet and oh the latest phone and they don't just buy the latest phone they buy it on contract oh lord what are you doing what are you doing why does a child that age need all those things five six seven eight nine and in britain i don't know what it's like in other countries america canada um and down under with australia and new zealand but children now and especially since covid um it was only starting before covid it's been around a few years but in school they had to do their homework on a computer and then just tap in the answers and then send it off to the teacher to be uh marked um yeah that's beyond me as well i th i think that children um will forget what piece of paper and a pen are used for but yeah that, that was awful of me to say um but that's the way it is so at a certain age they do need a computer and it's very difficult for parents to afford these things because that's the way the homework has got to be put in they don't accept it on a, a piece of paper and written with a pen nowadays which i find shocking because there might be four children in a household and every child has got to have a computer just to do their homework what the world's gone mad and as einstein said am i crazy or is everybody else crazy in this world and so with um going back to the scenario where this child has got you know all these computers the tablets the uh, mobile phone um they have confessed to me that it keeps them quiet that they play games or go on youtube or whatever well why have children if you want to keep them quiet enjoy that time with them when they leave home whether it's 16 or 18 you look back and those years will go so fast believe me there's a phrase that you only borrow uh, have a have a yeah a lend a borrow of your children and those those years really fly by and you won't believe it and then you look back and you think where are the photos of us uh, being a family enjoying ourselves you know where did we go on holiday and yeah all the rest of it because they were on the computer and just out of sight out of mind but then um there's parents then that take a step further and then they put a big tv in the child's room and they got all the nintendo the xbox playstation i don't understand all this sort of thing and it's where does it stop 
and you're creating so many problems, not just for yourselves financially, but also psychologically for the children, as I touched on um, previously, that they'll expect when they're older and earning money, whatever they want, they can have. And they, they might not earn that amount of money and they can't have it. So <coughs> it, it's just a vicious circle of creating debt. Now there's, there's a couple of phrases and a couple of words. The best phrase is um, about the root of all evil. Uh, yeah, money is the root of evil, root of all evil. And also I saw on um, my auntie's wall many, many years ago when she was alive, a, a brass plate. And on these brass plates, they used to put uh, sayings. And the particular saying on this brass plate was, the best place to live is just inside your income. Both phrases are so true. So, so true. So we've worked, looked at a scenario and you get the idea that basically spending things, buying things beyond your means and if you carry on down that route it's just going to get worse and worse, stress is going to build, 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 build and sometimes uh, debt isn't your fault, just something comes along out of the blue and in America I know that you've got to pay for um, when you go into a hospital you've got to pay a certain Leave it in the comments. I can't remember. I can't remember the words. It's like an insurance or something to cover your um, stay in a hospital. What if you can't afford to pay for that and you're whacked with a fifty thousand or hundred thousand pound bill for something that's happened to you? And it's just so difficult at times. Some debt is self-induced some isn't you know and it's it's a it, money is just uh it's it's a terrible terrible subject but we we've got to have money to live uh, i gave a scenario and all the rest of it bit of a common theme as i said just spending beyond your means simple as that and it's just built up built up built up now if we look at it in another from another angle have a think about these two words want and need okay want and need now if you want something that means that it's a luxury you want it you desire it for some reason and that is classed as a luxury if you need something, you it's a necessity to live. It might be that you've got um, a flat tyre and you need to go and buy a new tyre for your car uh, or have it fixed, uh, otherwise you can't get to work and earn the money. That's a necessity. And then there are other um, examples. Uh, Say uh, uh, you phoned me up and you said, Matt, come come over. And you're in a state, Matt, I, I really need some help. To Can you uh, look at my money? I'm in trouble. I say, yeah, no problem. Get all your bank account statements, credit card, store card statements together, everything. And work down them. And straight away I say, right, where are your store cards? And I'd get, um, I'd get... Straight away, all of your store cards, and I'd use a pair of scissors and I'd cut them up. you got to pay that bill off, um, or those bills. And with your credit cards, you can either cut them up or not. But before we get to that stage, I look at your bank account. And you've got to pay your mortgage, your rent, all your utilities, everything that is ne necessary to keep a roof over your head. That is, without a sh shadow of a doubt, the first thing that you've got to do. And food. So, 
say I worked on your uh, bank statement and I saw Netflix because we like to watch a film on a Friday and Saturday night here, yeah, whatever. And then Amazon Prime, I think it's for next day delivery or something like that. There's some perk to it. And um, why do you need Amazon Prime? Why are you ordering things on Amazon Prime or Amazon that you need to pay for Amazon Prime to have them delivered next day? That means you're buying things that you want and you can't afford it. You're poor, you're broke, you're in debt, you're skint. Simple as that. So then also with Amazon Prime, I believe that there's like a, a TV sort of thing that you can uh, um, register with. And then on your bank statement in this scenario, you've got Amazon Prime for delivery of buying things that you want. And you've also got these TV channels. I don't know whether it's a bundle. I don't know whether you've got to pay for each one individually. I don't know. So I say, well, why have you got um, Prime Amazon Prime TV? Oh, well, we like to watch this particular series. Na, 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 na. Yeah, whatever. You can see the theme going here. And then the next one. Oh, Sky TV. Now, it, in Britain, you can buy different bundles. I don't know what it's like for the rest of the countries around the world watching this. Um, and... It all depends what bundle you want. And you can have all singing, all dancing, all the Sky channels available. Sports, because they bought up so many sports, um, the rights to it. And you can have the full lot. So say you've, um, you're have you paying for the full lot of Sky. Then that's Netflix, that's Amazon Prime TV and that's Sky. What are you doing? What what are you spending that money for, and why are you ordering so much off Amazon? Just from those TV stations, Netflix, Amazon Prime TV, and Sky, you could say save at least. I'm I'm not very good. I don't know how much the numbers are, but I'll round it off to a hundred pound. Okay, a hundred pound British sterling, which is a hundred and thirty nine dollars on the exchange exchange rate here yeah, goes up and down but at the moment it's about 139 dollars uh canadian dollars but 170 australian that would be 200 dollars uh, approximately and new zealand 200 dollars and i don't know what the euro is sorry i can't work that out and um that's a lot of money that's a hundred pound a month that you could save by just going do 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 phoning them up cancelling the direct debits and the thing is if you think about it are you gonna die are you gonna die without those three tv channels no you're not you're just gonna have to go without simple as that same as you're not gonna order you can't order anything from amazon because those are luxuries you can only buy things that are necessary um and yeah to live that's the that's the situation you're in if money is causing you stress <coughs> excuse me so already you can see i won't yak on about the other bills and the other outgoings on the bank statement but you can see that it's just frivolous it's just not needed you can't afford it and those are the things that you look for on your bank statement and you just stop them you stop them right now and um or you know after this video maybe have a think and just phone them and say how do i stop it i can't afford it anymore you might be in a contract i don't know the ins and outs but just stop it as as asap with all of them just that's it no more and you save yourself a hundred pound Oh, and uh, another good one that I saw on a bank statement was that um, you get off the train, say you're in a city and you go to a well-known uh, coffee shop and you buy a coffee and you buy something to eat on your way to work. We'll call that £5, OK? And then, oh, you go go and buy lunch. And so, yeah, lunch costs more than £5, but we'll keep it to 
simple figures. So each day you're spending £10 on a needless coffee and what bite to eat on your way to work and dinner because you're either not organised or you're too lazy to um, prepare food the night before and um, drink whatever drinks you want. You could have water, anything and take the drinks with you and it's healthier for you as well. So in a week you're spending £50 on yeah, coffee and your food when you could make it yourself. So £50 in a month that's £200 and in American dollars that is about $278 per month that is about 340 Canadian dollars and that's about 400 Australian and New Zealand dollars that's a lot of money per month so already you could save yourself 300 pound oh but what if your husband or wife you know your partner whatever does exactly the same so you're then spending a hundred pound per week just on the coffee and the bike to get into work you know bite to eat and some food for dinner so that's a hundred pound a week that's 400 pound a month which is oh gosh this is going to fry, fry my brain now that's over well over 500 dollars per month and that is oh my goodness uh, close on 700 Canadian dollars and approximately 800 Australian and New Zealand dollars. So food costs you £200, TV costs you £300. That's a lot of money that you can just stop straight away, be more organised. So you can see there's ways and means you just got to be more organized and just stop spending money on frivolous things so at the moment we've reached a point in the video where we've looked at perhaps psychological reasons yeah the world we live in is so fast and materialistic and all the rest of it and yeah that, um, about growing up and reasons why people spend money you know psychological depression all the rest of it i've given you of an obvious scenario and basically you know yourself when i said about the two words want and need and you know yourself you know it's common sense and i'm i'm not judging you I'm not here to sort of criticise you. It's done. It's done. We're, we're all guilty of looking at something and saying, oh, yeah, fancy that, yeah. And then I think to myself, well, I'm only going to use it once. What's the point? It's, I'm just thinking I want that thing, not that I need that thing. So please remember the want and need. And whenever you go shopping... Remember those two words and you could go into whatever shop you go into, whether it's online or in store physically. Do you want it? Do you need it? Always, always now ask yourself from now on, do you want or need? If it's want, you can't have it. If you need it, then yeah, that's the way it goes. You need it to survive. So now that we've reached this point in the video after uh, just touching on different subjects and they are common sense you've got to agree and you are where you are for whatever reason and basically it's time to stop spending it's time to get off that roller coaster you, you just press the brake button and you get off that roller coaster which you've been on and which has got you into debt and given you stress which just yeah makes you ill. Press that break button, step back. It's just common sense what I'm I'm saying here. Just step back, 
have a look at your statements and everything and just be honest with yourself and pride comes before a fall and it doesn't matter that you know um how much you're in debt my goodness nowadays twenty thousand pound is nothing for debt there's loads of people with forty thousand fifty thousand pound debt and if get all your statements together okay now there is one institution in britain you might see things on telly or on the computer oh we can wipe off this um debt and all this and da, 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 da. i would only go to one institution in britain and that is the cab the citizens advice bureau they've been around for a long time and it is free if you see something advertised on um tv i don't know it, they wouldn't be on tv spending all that money on an advert if there wasn't something for them uh to get out of it go to the cab you've got to make an appointment so get all your facts and figures together get all your statements and don't be too proud to phone them and just Put your hand up and just say, I've overspent. I'm in debt. I'm in trouble. Simple as that. The past is the past. It's caught up with you. We are, you are where you are. If you don't make that phone call and book that appointment, really, if I say that you've got two choices, well, you haven't got a choice, really. You either book that appointment and get yourself sorted or you carry on get yourself further in debt and face bankruptcy and lose everything. Now the people in the Citizens Advice Bureau they are extremely they're so highly trained these people and they know who to contact and once you give them everything that all your debts and everything you will be absolutely amazed what, because they're so used to it, what they can sort out for you. And it might be, for instance, they might say, right, for this store card, so you had five store cards, they'll say, right, um, come to some agreement. If you pay a pound off each one, five, uh, each month you've got to pay it by say the 18th then that's it and that's just an example it might be a little bit more than that but yeah that's an example and just set up a direct debit before the 18th so you are paying that money you know that pound has been paid and that you're because if you miss that deadline, they're not going to give you another chance. They'll come chasing you for that money. Okay. So with a direct debit, you're safe. You know that that's being paid and you're safe. And that's it. And what might happen eventually that I've heard of with other people is that after so many years, the company who you owe money to, um, they just decide, well, we'll write it off against tax. Those are, you know, quite... A, that's quite a common scenario. I'm not saying that that is what is going to happen to you. Okay. So that is, it's that sort of thing that they can help you with. And they will make all the phone calls. They know all the people and they know how to sort it out. And if you go to the CAB, please, 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 if there's one thing take out of this video, please go to the CAB, okay, if you are heavily in debt and it's stressing you out. And you might leave a comment in a month's time or two months' time and you won't believe it that the CAB have sorted your finances out, that this huge mountain of debt, they've been able to come to some agreement that it's under control and... As long as you pay, set her up on direct debit, as I said, don't miss that deadline. And then 
you'll think, oh, and it'll be a bit of disbelief that this has been sorted out and it's all legal because you've been to the Citizens Advice Bureau. Um, and you might comment in a month or two and say, Matt, you know, took your advice or, yeah, what, however you want to phrase it. And thanks, you know, um, for, well, just relieving the stress. It, it, you were right, sort of thing. Um, I don't want to come across as egotistical or the video to be a a vanity video for myself it's just pointing you in the right direction that's all i'm doing and it's common sense yes it'll be wonderful please 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 make that phone call okay and then you might have just if i say you're not heavily in debt but you are in debt but it's it's a little bit you, you could manage to pay it off if you worked really hard and if you've got a job in the daytime you could deliver pizzas at night usually on a Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday night because since Covid people have got so used to having food delivered they're clamoring for drivers um, to deliver pizzas takeaways you know anything and you'll be back and forth back and forth working all night I don't know how much you paid um, but whatever that, say you decided to go down that route, ask them what is the the bare minimum because we've got to be yeah we've got to look at the bare minimum the worst scenario how much you're going to make that week, and if they say oh just ten pound a night and you work in four nights that's forty pound a week, so that's a hundred and sixty pound in a month, and that is the bare minimum that usually make well what if you make twice that amount and you make an extra 320 pound yes sort your tax out and your national insurance as well declare that but you might only owe i say only owe two thousand pound three thousand pound five thousand pound something like that but if you're willing to set aside work out how much if you're going to deliver say pizzas for example at night and you're willing to tire yourself out working two jobs. Um, so, yeah, you will be tired, you'll be stressed, all the rest of it. But then you'll have a goal at the end of it. And that goal is to pay everything off. And maybe you'll carry on for a few more months or a year just to build up some money, some cash flow and some savings in your bank. It might take you a year to pay off your debt. It might t take you two years. But it's just a case of head down, backside up, just work, just get on with it. And um, it, it's far better. You could do that or you could go to the CAB as well. I'm, you know, um, disclaimer, I'm not um, uh, qualified in the medical profession and I'm not qualified as a financial advisor. There's my disclaimer. But what I'm giving you, I'm just trying to point you in the right direction and help you and give you ideas. And it is common sense. And just to reduce the stress and, oh, get off this roller coaster. And once you get your finances sorted, say with the CAB if you're heavily in debt or you know just manageable debt cut back as well as much as you can and not only say you've got manageable debt if you cut back for instance the Netflix scenario I gave you the the um, Amazon Prime and you know want and need you cut back and you save yourself even more money then you won't have to work as long paying off your debt so yeah it's common sense and just I, I'm just giving you a little bit of a nudge and throwing some ideas around just so that you, you don't feel oh my god it's the end of the world you know this is gonna happen I'm never gonna get out of it you will get out of it but you've got to go to the right place and the right people and the right place and the right people are the CAB okay then there are people who earn money and they're a couple but they're both on low income 
and unfortunately they w they're happy with their lot and that low income still doesn't cover their outgoings and that is the world that I'm describing that we're in we're in survival times we really are so if you're in that situation I'm sure there's governments there's some sort of government things around. Again, check with the CAB. They Just for all money advice, go to the CAB. Because I'm not sure what government uh, things are around if you're on low income. And at the end of the day, there's also food bank, for goodness sake. You know, they can just deliver a food parcel to you. That'll be a, a huge help to you. And... Um, there's no shame in, you know, having a food bank. You're helping yourself. You've got to survive in these times. Now, once you sort your money out, the best way or best advice I could give you and how I was taught with money is that there's 12 months in a year. You know you've got to pay your rent, mortgage, all the utilities, everything to keep a roof over your head and you've got to buy food. So those are priority. So you work those out per month for 12 months. And I don't like working on 52 weeks. I prefer working on 50. Give, give myself a little bit extra for those two weeks. Yeah, for whatever. And so you could break that down from 12 months to weekly. Now you've paid your bills and you've got that amount of money left over but it's not really free money for you to go out and spend. If you own a house they always say to um, do a, a minimum of one thing in the house for upkeep whether it's decorating a room whatever um, hopefully two things and it's the same with the outside of the house to you know change gutters you know anything and all the rest of it and don't forget that you will have to buy new windows in 10 years time or 15 20 years time it might seem a long way off but once that bill comes in and if you haven't put money by how are you going to pay for them so you think of everything that is an outgoing a car you've bought a car great you're paying for that car. Don't do stretch yourself. And then you've got to put money by for servicing and work out. It's around about every 10, possibly 15,000 miles now because cars are getting better. We'll call it 10,000 miles. Work out your mileage per year so that you know how many services you've got to put money by for. There's a small, medium and a big service. I can't remember. You know, I'm useless with cars. So work out how much the services are. Work out how much uh, new tyres are. Basically, the upkeep of the car. And don't forget, that car is depreciating. And it might be one, two hundred pound a month. Put money by for the depreciation as well. So already you've got quite a lot of money just going into your car. Um, I, we'll call it into the car account. And then you've got money for the upkeep of the house. So you work out, right, okay, a room is going to cost X amount. And we've got to put X amount by for the outside of the house. And our oh, windows cost X amount of thousands. Um, we just had them put in. But say 10 years time, they're going to be double the price, you know, with inflation. Or 15 years time. Put that money by into another account. Now you can see where this is going and do it for everything, every little thing that you're paying for. You could be buying a magazine because it's the fashion, it's in trend to buy this magazine. You don't read it, you just order it. Don't even put money by for that, just stop the direct debit, get rid of it, pile of rubbish. Christmas, huge one. Work out how many people, who you're going to buy for, how much, um, set a, an amount, how much you're going to spend on each person 
child, adult, whoever, um, friends, family, you know the score and what I'm on about. Work that out and don't forget your Christmas shopping because you're going to be buying more food, more drink, all the rest of it for Christmas. You can open a regular savings account that may only pay one or two percent, something like that, at the moment. Open that in Octo in sorry August. So when you open that in August, then for the next year you'll either be able to get your money out in August or September, and you would have been paid um, interest on it. Not a lot, but if some interest, a couple of pound. It's worth it. So then you've got your money to buy all your presents. You've got your money to buy all the food. You can go out and buy all the presents, all the food, apart from the perishables, obviously, which you buy closer, well, day before or a couple of days before Christmas. It's all sorted because you've put the money by. So you might order a paper every day, have it delivered. Well, that paper might cost you £2, which is... And then on the weekends, they cost a little bit more. Perhaps it costs you £15 for a newspaper. And then a delivery fee of uh, £5. Just put that money by each week. So when the bill comes in for £80 at the end of the month, you've got that money there. And then you just pay the bill just like that. It's common sense. Just divide everything up. Think how many white goods you've got in your house. Think about uh, the fridge, the freezer, the dishwasher, uh, washing machine. You get the idea. And they, the companies have owned up that they only make those to last three or five years. So if something costs £300 and it's made to last three years, you've got to put uh, by, remember the 50-week scenario I said, you've got to put by... £2 each week, £8 a month, so that in three years' time, if it does, yeah, if it is, I was going to say something then and swear, if it doesn't work in three years' time, there we go, that's better, then you've got the money to replace it. Okay, we've got inflation, but you can see this where this is going, and then you put money by for a fridge, a freezer, and all the rest of it. Go throughout the house. Look at all the electrical goods that you've got. How much did they cost? And then look at all the computers. You might have teenagers and all their homework is done on their computers and everything. And they've got to have printers. The computer gets very slow. A laptop or whatever after three years, you know, full up with their work and everything. Work on the three year scenario, five year scenario at worst. And, um, or at best. And just keep putting that money by and you, you'll be surprised how much money you've got to allot for each of these. And then the excess from your pay won't be that much. It might be that much. But you have got the money in the bank. So if anything happens, you're covered. You are in control of your finances. You might not be able to go out to the restaurant every week and have this and order that. Da, 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 da. You, you've got to put money by for uh, children's uniform. You've got to put money by for clothes for yourself. There's so many things that you've got to put money by for. And if you can't afford... Say you'd have to put by £100 for um one of those categories per month if you can't afford the hundred pound and you can only afford 80 or 60 pound well surely 80 or 60 pound is better than nothing at all and then you'll at least you'll have something towards you know replacing uh when something breaks you'll be able to have something towards it and if other things last longer then you will have the money in the bank to buy it a pound is better than nothing at all. So, yes, I've yacked on, but hopefully, um, as I said, we've gone through all the scenarios, everything like that, and, oh, goodness me, but really, all I'd, I'd, all I'd love, love, love you to take from this video is just make that phone call to the CAB, okay? And once your finances are under control after phoning 
the Citizens Advice Bureau, then please live within your budget. And the, for instance, that I gave you about, you know, putting money by, it's common sense. And think of everything that you can, you know, put money by for. Holiday. You might not be able to put enough by for a holiday this year. Well, go without this year and then you'll have lots of money next year to have a great holiday. So, you know, there's pros and cons, but at least you're in control of your money and you've got savings and it's earning interest. And you know that if a bill comes in, you can pay it. You're not living from paycheck to paycheck. So please, please, please make that phone call and just go and see the CAB, no matter what your situation is, and they are the people to help you okay and i'd be highly interested to hear um your comments if you don't want to leave a comment i leave my email um always below uh if you don't want the world to read your comment just send me an email and i'd be really interested to hear uh how you get on and also please don't forget those two words want and need and it is common sense but as i said you are where you are it doesn't matter how you got to where you are being stressed about money it's just how it how it is that's it we are here today the past is the past it's caught up make that phone call okay and also once you sorted your finances out as i said please live within your budget and try and allot your money out so that you've got control of your money and don't forget those two words want and need so for a video that has been made at i don't know what time it is now probably about five o'clock in the morning and i'm feeling absolutely dreadful <laughs> i hope i really really hope that um, you've taken something from this video and yeah also it, it gives you hope as well you just gotta make that phone call that's all you gotta do okay so i will see you on the next one and the next uh big cause of stress um in the series job huge just as huge as money and goodness yeah when we cover that again i'll go through every scenario okay well i think i've yacked on enough don't you <laughs> i really hope this video helps you and the the easiest way now is just to make that phone call and once you've made that phone call to the citizens advice bureau you'll be in shock what they can do for you and how they can help you. Just go in and, as I said, just put your hands up. I'm in trouble. Please, can you... I, I don't know which way to turn. I really, really, really need some help and advice. I'm seriously in debt or I'm in debt, whatever. And you will be extremely shocked how they can help you. So... I will love you and leave you and I know it's been a long video but as I said earlier in the video these triggers are just too there's too much to, um, content to narrow it down any more than the length of what the video is it's as simple as that um, in every single trigger video they are going to be long but um, if that is what is stressing you out and i'll give different ideas and like i have in this one isn't it worth hanging around for that amount of time um to hopefully get some hints tips and be just be nudged or you know in the right direction just to uh, help de-stress yourself and just for watching a video for it might be half an hour it might be an hour to possibly change your life and stress levels because some of these um triggers 
they will be life changing that I'm going to be covering and there will be a fear factor there for you but um, yeah hopefully life will turn out better and a lot less stressful okay so I'll love you and leave you and I'll see you on the next one thanks for tuning in